is what's better, van life or canal life at this stage? Oh. It's so different to van life. It's so simple. It's going to be an absolute disaster. I'm absolutely terrified to go through a lock. I think we're in a bit of trouble, no one <laughs> that we've noticed there's a massive advantage to narrow bike life over van life. You've left it in reverse. But it's going back. Yes. This is the first day of doing canal life and we're going to have to go and knock on someone's door. Oh, what a start to bloody canal life, eh? Already causing trouble with the bloody locals. Are we going to buy a narrowboat? Um, and the answer is... Welcome back to the channel. Last week, we broke the news that after two and a half years full-time van life and weeks of tough decision making, we are going to be selling our camper van and full-time home, Morgan. With a new engine and warranty, MOT and all new ancillary parts, and just in general being in the best shape our camper van has ever been in, we thought it was time to part ways and give us a fresh start and our camper a new home. We tried to sell Morgan on eBay and with so many genuine bidders and interest, we thought that Morgan was going to go to a good home for sure. But unfortunately, two planned attacks from trolls meant they sabotaged our auction and we unfortunately had to end it. Trying not to let internet trolls win, we then decided that maybe something good could come from this. And with the idea of someone winning Morgan as a prize in a raffle for just £5 a ticket, that's what we did. So now Morgan is officially live on the link in the description description for anyone to enter to win and thanks to the thousands of you who have already entered in just a few days we're getting closer to possibly making our camper van your fully off-grid home but with Morgan now being a raffle prize that left us without a home and at this junction in our lives we felt it's time to explore new adventures and ways of living as freely as possible in this crazy world it's time to see what narrowboat life is like in the UK something we have never done before but how will it compare to the freedom of van life Welcome back to the channel. Uh, one of the most common questions we have gotten from the very, very start of van life, as soon as we started hitting all those challenges was, why don't we do boat life instead? Why don't we do canal life, narrow boat life? And today, um, we are going to be doing that. We are starting that. And it's gonna be very, very interesting because Janine and I have never done it before. So we're leaving Morgan behind. He's a wonderful home, but for now, we're leaving Morgan parked up here and we're gonna get on our very, very first narrow boat to see what it's like. If you think we can handle the challenge um, and you think you, we might like it, who knows? This might be the new thing for us. Uh, we're gonna give it a go right now. Excited. I'm so excited. It is so, like, we've just arrived. It's so peaceful here already and we're just on the side of the canal and this here is our canal boat and it looks beautiful from the outside. I can't wait to get inside and have a look and see what it looks like. Should we go now? Yeah, for the first time. We literally haven't been inside yet so we don't know what it looks like and uh, yeah, I think we should go check it out. So cozy. <laughs> Which way did you go in? Oh, oh. It looks like you'd have to crouch down, but when you get inside, wow! Oh, oh, how cute is this? It's amazing. So here we have a lounge area, radiator <laughs> as well, which is really important. It's actually quite warm in here as well. It's, it's really cold outside today, so that's good news for me. Um, a lovely lounge area, and this is the kitchen with an oven, some hobs, microwave, and a kettle. A fridge and freezer, and storage space as well. So that's amazing. And some pretty spring flowers. And fresh. some lovely fresh flowers. It's so, it is really nice. Now we're moving on to the bathroom. Oh! So in the bathroom we have got a really nice little shower and a seat in the shower, which is handy, um, and a toilet and a sink and a mirror. It's quite it's quite well spaced actually. Um, it's it's well designed to make the most of a li the little bit of room. And through here is the best bit. Through here we have got the two single beds. Um, I think we can push them together. You can, yeah. So yeah, and oh, that's so cute. We've got two hot water bottles and two blankets. It's like well. they knew you were coming. <laughs> and further through the bedroom, you can go out onto the outside. Oh, this is gonna be so nice in the morning, isn't it? Yeah. Look. Chilling out here with a cup of coffee. Oh. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's way more gorgeous than I ever imagined. I don't know what I imagined, but this is just like 
it feels so peaceful already. It's just lovely. <laughs> really nice. Should we grab our stuff? And yeah. Load up. Yeah. I'm just gonna hop off here. Okay. Supposed to do. No, but just go anyway. What do you think? I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so different to van life, yet some bits are so similar. I think, hopefully we're not out of our depth because I've never done this before. Like, I have no idea how this boat works. I'm relying on you, Janine. Oh my God. Who's also never done it before. <laughs> um, hopefully they're gonna teach us how to use the thing in a second. No, this is nice. I can get used to it. Already I know I'm gonna like it. Already, as you said, peace, calm. It's so peaceful. So, so peaceful. Yeah, I'm gonna like this. And there's a kettle, hot water bottles for you. Everything. Let's let's get let's get all the food in and let's get going. Emptying our food shopping and checking out some of the other facilities and useful utensils, we headed to the office to sign some papers, grab some life jackets, and back to the boat to watch a safety and instruction video. This is when the idea that we will be operating a large floating vehicle really sank in, considering that we've never done anything like it before. Like I said before. <laughs> It's so simple, it's going to be an absolute disaster. I missed all of that. Did you? Um, I don't know, I don't get any of it. Oh my god, we've just watched the safety briefing video and I didn't realise there was so much to know about these, about these boats. I'm absolutely terrified to go through a lock. I don't know, what do you think Liam? I, I think we're in a bit of trouble, in all honesty. <laughs> I think we're in trouble because this genuinely takes both of us to to do this. It's a, yeah. te it's a teamwork thing because there's only two of us on here. Yeah. And it, and it, it's one person driving. Yeah. The boat and the other person's doing the locks. Yeah. Which means that you have to understand. I I do, I'll if whatever the hardest part is, I'll happily do. But I've got a feeling <laughs> that you're gonna be you're gonna be steering the boat through the locks because I think that the doing the locks part is might be the hardest thing. I don't mind doing it, but I just didn't understand it. I think we get through the first, we do one lock today on our own, and then we'll moor up somewhere and just breathe. <laughs> and recover. It's supposed to be relaxing. <laughs> I'm so scared. Okay, we are in urgent need of a lesson. Luckily, that was on the agenda of Chaz Harden Boats too. With a lesson from George, we headed off to test driving the boat, and I was appointed captain. Feeling nervous, I was taught how to drive in a straight line, which I almost got, how to turn around, which I think I managed with the help from some heavy winds, how to park, and the part I was dreading the most, we headed through a lock. Liam was taught how to operate the locks and I drive us through. After about an hour, we said goodbye to George and were let out alone on the canals. So, <laughs> a lot's happened. Um, the guy who was showing us what's going on is buggered off, um, but he's very, very helpful. Um, and now we're about to face, just down here is our first lock. Uh, before it gets dark, actually, we, we've got the choice of uh, doing the lock um, before the d darkness comes in or doing it tomorrow. And I think we're both going to try and do it now whilst, you know, how to do it is fresh in our mind. So we've pulled over so Janine can go to the toilet and, uh, and then we're going to... And then it's going backwards, Janine. And then we're going to go, then we're going to go and do the, the lock. You've left it in reverse, you knobhead. Janine, you left it in reverse. The toilet, even the toilet takes some working out. It's not just straight up go to the toilet. Janine, you've left it in reverse. <laughs> you've left it in reverse. Wait, it's going back. Yes. Here you go. Okay. You take, take, take this. Well, I think the most important thing is you don't let that trail in the water ever. Well, I can just go because it's at an angle now anyway. Are you ready to tackle your first lock? Yes, kind of. Before it gets dark. Yeah. Let's go and do it. It looks like the first one's open. So we so we just got to go into it. Will you help me in? Uh, yeah. yeah. Just leave I've got to remember what to do myself. I've got oh. I can't. Honestly, it's complicated. <laughs> I'll be up there anyway, okay? I'm going to go ahead. Okay. Go for okay. it. Good luck. You good luck as well. We only went and bloody did it. 
Woo! <laughs> 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 oh, you like driving that I boat. I love it. I do actually like it. The instruction videos and the handbooks and stuff make it sound a lot more frightening than it actually is. I don't know if that's just, it just went easy on us for that one, but uh, we got through it, we took our time. There was no oncoming traffic as well. <laughs> yeah. You did very, very well, sweetheart. Very, very well. I'm proud of you. Another round save you now. Oh my God, I can't believe that I have just done that. I am so proud of myself <laughs> to operate such a massive vehicle. Um, fair enough, it only goes like one mile an hour, but still, I didn't crash it. And uh, yeah, I'm actually really excited now. I'm so glad that I'm the one that he sort of taught. <laughs> Because I'd, if he didn't teach me, I don't think I would have had a go really you, at all. I would have had to teach you. You, yeah, and that would have gone wrong. I, I don't even know what I'm doing. You, you know more than I do. <laughs> all he's got me doing is tying up ropes and opening locks. <laughs> I know. Continuing our journey, we made a sudden stop. Okay, so we <laughs> we were just getting a bit ahead of ourselves. I was going in fast mode, and uh, we've come up to another lock. We don't fancy doing another lock because the sun's about to go down, and if anything goes wrong and the sun goes down it'll be a disaster so we're just gonna moor up here right in front well not right in front of it a little bit back because you're not allowed to moor in front of the lock so we hope that this is okay we're quite far back it's right over there the lock is so yeah we're just gonna do it tackling only one lock on our own was enough for our first day so we moored up in a peaceful location on our own on a canal in the middle of the countryside it felt nice to have the option to simply just stop and park anywhere and apart from really obvious no mooring places without any parking restrictions so we're moored up I locked the door it's gonna get dark soon it's getting cold central heat it's got central heating which we're gonna try out uh, with an actual webasto boiler which is quite amazing. So we're gonna see if that works. And let's see, it's got radiators throughout, so it's probably it could get quite warm, Janine. I can hear something going, can you? Yeah. And then I guess it's just um food and drink time, isn't it? I know. Ce celebrating our success. <laughs> and this is our view for the evening. Very pretty. And this is the other side. Also very pretty. Putting the heating on and making a hot water bottle, we set up the dining room table ready for dinner. Liam made some plant-based salmon with tagliatelle pasta and a cream sauce, whilst I opened a bottle of bubbly. We sat and enjoyed our evening, moored up in this peaceful spot on the canal, hoping that tomorrow we'll go as smoothly as today. It's the fire in the rain It's the smile within the pain It's the logic but insane You cannot know from where it came on the wall So many times I hear the call It's the silence of the room The way you turn before you bloom Another shadow for the blind mm -hmm. Good morning, thank you. Think I'm gonna lose my mind Oh my god, disaster this morning. I have just been trying to fly my drone and uh, for some reason I wanted to get a shot of the canal boat from above so I went up really high and all of a sudden the drone just bolted and I couldn't get it back. The winds are up but they're not that high um, so it should have come back when I wanted it to and it didn't so I had to try and land it so I was making the drone go lower and lower and lower and try not to land it in the canal and obviously I've flown it into a tree and this tree is hanging over someone's garden so we're gonna have to oh, this is the first day of doing canal life 
and we're going to have to go and knock on someone's door and try and get this drone back. Uh, it's a bit of a disaster. It's really embarrassing, uh, but we're just going to have to do it. This is the view from the drone up the tree. <laughs> this is what the drone can see. And actually, you can see a little bit of the canal there. So it's sort of hanging kind of really close to the canal up someone's tree, but there's a hedge there, so we can't reach it. If it falls down, it'll go into their garden. Oh, what a start to bloody canal life, eh? Already causing trouble with the bloody locals. But we've got to go and get it back. Oh. Come on, stay away from my door. Come on, stay away from my door. Do you reckon you can get it? Go near a drone with a 10 foot large pole. <sighs> oh my god. You're going to have to go knock on their door. Oh no. I know I'm not going to be able to hook it over this way anyway. Making friends with the locals. Come back and leave my soul alone. Is that a lot? Thank you so much. Thank you. Got permission. Got permission? Permission to go and hook it out of the tree. Yeah. Okay, cool. And the drone is saved. Although it's not turning off, so it might be broken. We're not sure. We're and gonna have to test that out. Can we just say what well, the, the winner and the success <laughs> lies with the 10 foot barge pole this yeah. morning? Not with Liam and Janine. No. What, one nil to 10 foot barge pole. <laughs> you wouldn't be without it, would you? Oh my gosh. Did you have to use the barge pole? Yeah, for a drone in the tree. <laughs> On the first day. On the first day. <laughs> Okay, we're experiencing proper spring weather here, like heavy showers mixed with sunshine. The rain has just stopped. We're trying to take it as easy as much as possible because Janine and I need to be told to slow down. We can't slow down ourselves, we need to be told. And narrow boats go at walking pace, so it automatically slows you, it slows us down, which is good for us, and that's what we enjoy. We've had a really sort of like lovely start to the day, apart from the drone in the tree and knocking, knocking on the locals' doors and getting them involved with it all and stuff. So now, without trying to set too much of a mission, we actually desperately need 4G, and out here there's nothing. I had to climb a hill last night to get 4G, uh, which overcooked the pasta, because Janine was supposed to be keeping an eye on it, obviously. <laughs> Sorry. So we're gonna head to Nantwich, um, and I'm hoping they've got 4G signal. I haven't got enough signal to know how far Nantwich is, I just know it's the next big town. They said it's hours away, I can't remember how many hours away it is, I think it's at least three or four. So uh, we're gonna use the sunshine that's just come out and make a break for it. Locks, twists, turns, whatever comes in our way, we're just gonna go straight for it on our first proper day of narrow boat life. Right, so it's my job to start up this, this thing and I can't remember what to do. We are actually floating out. Ian's having to go at the front so we can, we can't turn on the engine. Oh my gosh, I'm freaking out. The lights aren't turning off on the engine. They've got to be off before you can turn the engine on. And um, I pull us back in. <laughs> and we, and now we're just floating off because we were distracted. After gaining control of the boat, we finally set off on our maiden voyage to a place called Nantwich. Our day on the boat gave us all seasons today, with sun, sleet, rain and wind, making it a bit challenging to say the least. However, the moments in the sun and the calmness of driving the boat through some stunning locations and countryside made it all worthwhile. There's a sun in the sky, there's a cloud drifting by. Oh, what a day. Um, the weather has been like crazy, as it always is this time of year. We've, have, we've had every single type of weather, including hail and sleet. So this is Nantwich. Uh, it's not as far as we're gonna go today, hopefully. 
um, but we do need tea bags and we're so pleased to be here so we can get tea bags if you're british and you're watching this you'll understand the absolute dire state of emergency that we're in with no tea bags so we're gonna go and go and see if we can find some and then we're gonna hit the road hit the road so used to saying that in the van and then we're gonna go hit the canals again secure in the boat closing all the curtains we were ready to hit the town perhaps a little too ready oh my gosh i cannot believe it if anything else could go wrong today we have just locked ourselves out <laughs> and it was Liam's fault. I completely blame him. He grabbed the lock and he grabbed the key and he thought it was the key for the lock, obviously, but it wasn't. So he locked us in. He locked us out, sorry. And, um, and now we're having to have a bit of a rescue team going on. What's going on? <laughs> They're going to come out and get to us, but they don't know when. They're, oh, right, okay. they're gonna they're gonna come out and get to us but they don't know when they can come out and get to us really yeah but she they said they're so nice they seemed really concerned about all of the hail that we've been getting and how we've been getting <laughs> and the high winds oh we're fine we just lock, lock, <laughs> the problem is we locked ourselves out we're all right with the extreme weather <laughs> Anyway, we, we, if we're going to go to Sainsbury's or Morrison's or whatever, we're going to get a move on okay. and go now. Trying not to get into any more trouble, we headed off, arranging a place to meet for the spare key. We wandered into the quaint little town of Nantwich for some all-important tea bags. Whilst there, we admired the church in the centre, the spring flowers and the blossom on the trees. Our time in Nantwich felt like a proper spring day as we strolled through the bustling market. We finished our time here with some delicious cakes and a cup of tea before heading back to the boat. We managed to get another key thanks to the guys, Chas hardened boats they really sorted us out and they got us they, they've got us back into the boat again so we're about to go in now but Nantwich nice town actually really surprisingly I thought it'd be I, I don't know something about the, the name Nantwich I didn't think it would be good you know images come in your head but that was nice right yeah it was oh, really nice it was pretty good since it was so cold, time was knocking on and it would be sunset soon, we decided to stay moored up here until the morning. Yes, this is us being sensible. It's good, isn't it? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Good morning from Nantwich in Cheshire or Shropshire. I can't. I don't know which one. It's one of those. One of those counties. Right. Today we've had a really nice moor up here. It was so peaceful. Canal paths are really peaceful at night, at least the ones that we've been to, the two we've been to so far. So basically, now we've got the bad weather out of the way, the sleet, the hail, the high winds and all that, we hope. Um, and we've got the getting drones struck in trees and having to knock on neighbors' doors, um, getting ourselves locked out of the van, forgetting tea bags, all the rest of it. Once we've got through all the initial hurdles and speed bumps, we're thinking right now, then rather continuing this way, there's a place down here where we can do a full U-turn, which for a 50-foot boat is quite a feat. Um, so apparently that's just down here, and we're actually going to take advantage of that and go all the way back in the opposite direction. If we go back in the opposite direction, we hit pretty much Liverpool. And if we're thinking, if we can get as far as Liverpool, that would be a great challenge for us. So over the next few days, we'll get to really experience uh, boat life the way it should be. And then if we make Liverpool, we're going to drop back around and go to Chester. That's the plan anyway. Wish us luck. Are you ready for the challenge, Janine? Are you, I am ready. Let's go. <laughs> well, you're the one that's going to have to turn it around because I do not know how to do that. Or you Maybe could show I. me. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> go on then. Oh. Come on then. We set off this morning. I did my first unassisted U-turn, which I was really nervous about as the winds were so high and you can't steer whilst reversing. It's a little tricky, but thankfully I did it and I felt quite accomplished. It wasn't long down the canal that we came across our second major challenge, a lock shuffle. This is where three boats enter a two lock system. Two go in one direction and the other in the opposing direction. All this was still only our second full day. I was quite nervous about this too, but it turned out that with the help from Liam taking care 
threat of unlocking the gates and the patience from other boaters, we managed to get through it without any casualties. New life accomplishments in our back pocket, we sailed down the canal towards the coast. The weather was ominous and the pace was slow, but freedom was definitely in the air and we were loving it. Then we spotted a chance to pull up our boat at a supermarket, a real novelty we couldn't refuse. Okay, so we've just stopped off outside Waitrose. <laughs> so what we've decided to do is moor up. Liam's gonna run in and get some ingredients and we're gonna cook a curry. And I didn't know that you could stop outside supermarkets. I don't know why this is so exciting for me, but I, as soon as we saw Waitrose, we were both really, really excited. Right, wish me luck. Good luck. I know that you're the one. But maybe I told you one too many times. Mm. You smile, I come it smells so good. <laughs> but maybe you oh, rather the me undo those crimes. <laughs> Very happy. Summer <laughs> nights walking back to your house, watching bye you bye, dance when there wasn't a sound. Really felt like we figured it out What I'd give to get back there now But If I've been getting oh. in the oh way If everything I give makes you not want me I'm so sorry Don't let me down easy If all my life for you makes you Find somebody else. We have just seen our first ever Kingfisher in England. I knew the earth for you, but maybe you'd rather me just move on by. I thought you'd hung the moon But maybe you'd rather hang me out to dry Summer nights sneaking out of the house Wishing we could just get out of this town Really felt like we'd figured it out What I'd give to get back there now But if I That is not my parking There's something in the water <laughs> We've made it to Ellesmere Port. This is the furthest point we're going to go to. Just over in front of us is the River Mersey and on the other side of that obviously is Liverpool. What's even better than us reaching our final destination is Janine decided to show off for one last time and turn a 50 foot boat round in this which got us a nice audience from these people here who had not just the waves that were making them spill their coffee in the morning but the sheer amazement uh, people who have just rented a boat and turning it around in a place that you're not supposed to turn it around. It was absolutely fantastic. Panicky at the time, obviously, which is why we couldn't film it, but funny. We made it to our furthest point on the boat, Ellesmere Port, where the canal meets the River Mersey. Just over the river was Liverpool, which we thought was really cool that we took a narrow boat all the way here. But with cities in our mind, our destination today wasn't Liverpool, but the beautiful city of Chester, somewhere we were super excited to visit in the boat. Going back through the famous Northgate Lock staircase, we chose a mooring spot right in the city centre, a place where we think we wouldn't even be able to park up in our camper van. Okay, so we just made it through that mega lock I think it's like three in a row. Liam did really well. He drove it for the first time and we've just pulled over. We're actually in Chester in the city centre and we've moored up. We are going to stay here for maybe a couple of days because we actually want to experience what canal boat life is really like and we thought there's no better way than mooring up, exploring the local area and just really chilling with it because if we actually did this for our lifestyle we wouldn't be tearing about everywhere all the time we would actually pull over and just relax and just chill with it so that's what we're gonna do but first Liam's cooking. <laughs> I hope it's not burning the food. It's a bit smoky in here. Yeah. Let's open the windows. Oh. That's vegan bacon for you, isn't it? 
Mind you, it's any bacon, really. Yeah, but because vegan bacon's a little bit more like cardboard, it goes, it gets set on fire quickly. <laughs> oh. Thankfully, the food hadn't burnt. We enjoyed bacon burgers and chips before heading out into Chester. Chester was founded as a Roman fortress in the first century AD. It also has the most complete set of city walls in the UK, which stretch two miles long. Our mooring spot was directly below a plant-based cafe that gets creative with imitating egg dishes. Liam ordered vegan poached egg on toast out of curiosity, and it was absolutely delicious. We promised ourselves one night out as a treat on this trip, so headed to the incredible shrub restaurant and bar in Chester, specialising in small plates and scrumptious cocktails. The food was insane and the cocktails were strong, which equated to a fabulous evening, and in spitting distance was a little home afloat on the canal. What a treat to be parked up so close to the heart of Chester City, a privilege we'll never forget. Wow, Chester is awesome. Definitely one of our favorite cities in the UK. And the restaurant that we went to yesterday, which is also like a bar and a cocktail bar, as well as a restaurant, is Shrub in Chester, which where the boat is not parked from, is amazing. We cannot recommend that enough. Please go and check it out. I'll leave the link in the description to that place, um, as well as all of the canal boat information as well. Uh, we're having a really, really good time being um, in the dead center of Chester. Uh, when do you ever get to do that? Actually, at this point, before we get back to it, uh, I thought it was a really good, because I know many of you have been thinking it as well, as we've been doing three years full-time van life, what are the similarities? What's better, van life or canal life at this stage? Okay, so I guess the first pro for Canal Life is the amount of space that you get on the boat. Um, it's quite extraordinary, a 50 foot long boat and it feels like a proper home, more than a van might. And we've got a big camper van that we've made to feel like a proper home. But I think that uh, Canal Boats, Narrow Boats really, really do like offer so much more in terms of space. Uh, we've got a beautiful bedroom and a kitchen, a full bathroom. Uh, with a shower and sink and all the rest of it kitchen dining room and then two sort of outside spaces as well definitely the space is a big 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 pro for canal life the other thing and the other advantages that i would say that narrow boat life has got over van life is the unseen beauty like canals are like a place a lot of it you can't reach by road or footpath or the towpath is the footpath or whatever um, so unless you're actually hiking there or you're going there for a specific reason it's usually reserved for people walking the towpaths or narrow boaters and we've seen some sites um, that we've never seen before and that we wouldn't have seen unless we were doing narrow boating so unseen beauty on canal canals is definitely 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 one of the best things about narrow boating so far for us i guess the third thing is the that we've noticed as a massive advantage to narrow boat life over van life is the sheer amount of places that you can park up for the night uh mooring for the night shall we say you can literally moor up anywhere everywhere that where there isn't those black um, sort of mooring post with the white bit on top which there isn't many about so before you go into bridges or locks you can't moor there but they're very few and far between everywhere else vast miles and miles and miles of parking spaces so the freedom to do that is definitely an advantage over van life because as we know with van life take they're restricting some of the spaces that we can go to so you have to hunt for them a little bit more whilst doing van life do the rest of the list back on the boat Oh my god, thank you. Oh, that's so nice, thank you. Should I take a bite? Yeah. Did you get one? No. Oh, mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was insanely cold. Whew. My hands are just so ice cold, I can barely move them. 
Oh my god. Oh, warming up by this. Oh. Thank you. Cheers. And one thing that I like about it is that canal boat life is one big constant cup of tea. It really is. You don't have any points of the day where you can't have a cup of tea. Even when you're on the move, one person can be inside brewing up a, the next cup of tea or coffee and it's brilliant. I put the kettle on today. <laughs> <laughs> I've already got one. <laughs> so you're gonna have to wait. <laughs> one thing that I love about it is the community aspect of canal boat life is absolutely incredible. There's so many friendly people out there. I don't think we've gone through a lock and someone hasn't helped us yet, which is just incredible. Whether they're people walking by or other boaters, just helping with the locks. Everyone that we've gone past have waved and said hello. Everyone's so happy, um, having nice little conversations here and there. It is really, really nice. There are obviously a few shady characters as you get in any kind of community, but the majority of people are absolutely incredible. So one of the top things about canal life, that's also one of the worst things about canal life, is it's really slow. Like you can't get anywhere too quickly. We're dropping the boat back off now and it's taking us forever. Um, if you go past boats that are moored up, you have to go at ticking over speed, what we're doing right now. Um, and if there's sometimes, there's miles of boats moored up. So you really don't get, but that's not the point. The point, is, the point isn't to get anywhere too quickly. If you want to go zipping about, you're in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing. Um, but it's an obvious one, but it's worth noting. So obviously you are limited to where you can go. You can only go where the canals go, obviously. Whereas with van life, you can nip anywhere across the country or into Europe. So this one is similar to vans. Um, maintenance costs can be really high. As many of you know, with our experience of van life, um, you could have it where a really easy time or you can have a really, really tough time. Um, it's the same with canal boats. I mean, we've seen, we, we don't know the full extent to it all because we've only done it for a week, but we've seen uh, people really like with dilapidated boats. Um, I should imagine that once rust starts taking over, you're in a bit of trouble. Um, van life, you're not exposed to water as much as you are with boat life. So I should imagine the maintenance costs can be higher. Um, if you keep on top of them, obviously it's probably less. Similar to that, this is something that you probably don't hear very often um, where, with canal narrow boaters, and it's something that could put you off, um, is the marina costs. So if you're not in the boat all year round, you want to moor up somewhere for, the, for a season, costs, I think from what we were told, almost five grand or over five grand for a season or a year. So that's quite high. And even so, the guys who rented us this boat said that if you were to do canal life properly, or narrow boat life properly, the way that, that you were sort of told to, then actual fact, the costs can creep up to 10, even 15,000 pounds a year, which is similar to living in a flat. So the costs potentially could be higher than van life. Obviously this could be hearsay. We don't actually know because we haven't had first-hand experience on that. So if anyone knows any more information on this, please let us know in the comments. So the big question is, are we gonna buy a narrow boat? Um, and the answer is, well, not yet. <laughs> we are sold on narrow boat life, canal boat life. It is awesome, it is so good. If you're looking for a really nice change of direction in your life, then narrow boating is the way forward. As it stands for us at the moment, it's probably a little bit too slow paced for us at the moment. We've got lots of traveling that we wanna do and lots of things that we wanna do. But my God, this has been an eye opener and um, I was seriously considering it for the future as well. We've had long, hefty discussions about it um, and we've, re we've gone into this open-minded, open-hearted and it, it's, um, it's, it's won us over big time. As much as we absolutely love boat life, at this point in our lives, we love broader traveling too much to slow it down. But it's something we will seriously think about for the future, as we've had such a good time. We'd love to take this opportunity to thank Chas Harden Boats for letting us rent a narrow boat at this crazy stage in our lives. If you would like to rent this beautiful boat from Chas Harden for your own holiday, you can find the details to them in the link in the description. And join us next week where we start a new adventure in our lives that we hope could be a new direction for us to go in. You and I, we got it.